welcome to the Waterstone Election 2020 podcast. I'm your host, editor of the Daily Blog, Martin Bradbury, and with me in the studio is libertarian political commentator and stuff columnist Damien Grant, and our special guest this week is the former leader of the National Party until October the 18th, Simon Bridges. Welcome, Simon. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much. Good to be on the show. Uh, well, here we are now, 32 days away until the 2020 election, and it's been another week of political shenanigans. Labour promised big symbolic gestures that don't do too much. National promised slightly less expensive gestures that do even less. Act takes Donald Trump's <laughs> climate denial and makes it a policy. Ah. <coughs> the Greens in New Zealand first continue to flounder, and Billy TK and Jamie Lee Ross unleash conspiracy theory madness. Damien, your favourite moment from the last week in the campaign? My favourite moment is when I did not give a speech at the um, Aotea Centre rally. I was asked. Really? I was I was asked to give a speech. Um, but at I this poli- madness? At this madness, but I, I politely declined. Jesus. So that, so that for me, that the fact that I wasn't there, that was my highlight. Okay, Simon, your favourite moment from the last week's campaign? Uh, look, I think possibly Jamie Lee Ross this morning announcing that uh, he won't be standing in botany. Uh, you know, b- making up every sort of excuse you could think of when the real reason is that um, one one to two percent of the votes is not a viable uh, alternative to uh, Mr Luxon. Uh, do you think it was surprising, uh, Simon, that he decided to make that decision? He's saying it's a tactical move so that he can focus on a bigger party vote. But if he thought there was any chance of winning Botany, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have walked away from that, would he? Oh, of course that's right. I actually think it's a slightly, and I say slightly, but slightly canny publicity move, right? I mean, he's uh, in the absence of major political parties making major political announcements, which yep. they both sort of seem somewhat scared to do. Um, he, he's dominated the news today, him and Billy uh, Billy T. So I, I think that's what they were doing. I think they've got themselves in the headlines, and, and they're working on the same principle that Winston worked on for, uh, what has it been, 25, 30 years, and that's that <laughs> there's just a very small group of idiots that if you're in the news enough, will vote for you. Uh, let's move on and have a look at the political parties this week. Labour, <coughs> the UMR... UMR. <clears throat> research poll that came out, uh, the internal one, 53% there. Simon, uh, there hasn't been one opinion poll that had Labour under 50% since the first lockdown. What does National have to do to win back the National voters that Labour's picked up? What do they, what do they need to do? What's the message oh, they've got to get through? Oh, I think they've just got to be in the... Ru- they've got to do more of the running. I think this sort of um, hugging Labour, just being very careful, that's not sort of a strategy. I mean, I agree with the way you summed it up, but I think you talk about high symbolism. I'd say slogans. We've had a holiday pay wave and a tax break. That This is all stuff they could dream up in about three minutes, Labour. But, you know, unfortunately for National... Um, when it's good, things are really good, and that's sort of where it is for Labour. They can kind of, in the media's eyes, do no wrong. Yep. So National needs to shake that up a bit. Um, it needs to be uh, uh, bold uh, in what it's doing. I'm not saying it's, it's being timid, but I think it's just got to step it up um, to, to, to be in the running. It, it, it is in the running. It's the underdog, but it is in the running. And I say that because, look, I think at the moment... There's going to be so much wasted vote, potentially. With, yes. You know, NZ First, Greens, New Conservatives, Advanced NZ, etc. Not necessarily getting there, that it is still anyone's game. Damien, progressive critics will claim Labour's gestures, like a Matariki public holiday and tiny tax on the richest earners, don't go far enough. That's what progressive uh, critics are going to say. How much trouble is Labour in if they do win a majority and don't do more than symbolic gestures? I don't think they're in any trouble uh, at all because the New Zealand electorate is by and large fairly conservative. Right. And one of the things that Labour has done is by coming out with this 39 cents in the dollar and very little real transformational change is that they are sending a very clear signal to the electorate that it's going to be business as usual. Right. And so I think, although the, the, the crazies on the fringe yep. will be dis- disgruntled, but most of those are going to vote green anyway. So... I don't think it's a problem for them. National, uh, the UMR internal poll, 29%. Simon, if a national party leader led their party to a 30% result, should they resign? 
Um, <laughs> look, I don't know, and I don't know what the polls actually show. You, you and Mara, is, you know, you've said the numbers. Yep. I haven't seen any polling. I, I think personally, we're we're, we're absolutely due for a Colmar Brunton poll. Yes, we are. Any day. Uh, so that's sort of something. I, I think that let, let's go with your uh, the UMR yep. and let's say it's sort of it's somewhat meaningful because sure. it may be. Uh, the issue, the issue then for national is we've actually been putting out some detailed policy. Look, some of it's been a bit dull, uh, but no, no, the dental policy was very good today. Very good. Yep. So some of it's been good stuff, and so it, it just goes back to my point that at this point, you know, actually we've got to sort of shake things up a bit uh, to be in the running. But a thirty percent. But a, if if any party leader led national to thirty percent, that 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 would be surely over for that party leader, wouldn't it? Well, you know, I, I, I know I, you can lead a horse to water, Martin, but you can't you make certain, it. You certainly can. So 35, to, 35%? I'm not going to get into that. 25%. Do I hear 25? Do I hear 24? 23? Don't take, don't take the bait, Simon. Damien, da, Damien, Sean Plunkett, who facilitated last week's Business New Zealand Leaders Forum, ranked their performances as Jacinda number one, David Seymour, number two, and Judith Collins, number three. Now, Shane ain't no card-carrying member of the Labour Party. If he is ranking Judith that low, is National in for a hiding on the election day? No, I, I don't think they are. And, and actually, um, uh, I had a conversation with Sean, and he said there's quite a bit of daylight between uh, Jacinda and David Seymour. Right. Um, so there, there, there is a bit of a gap there. So, so Judith is doing even poorer. Yeah, well, if you right, want, if you want right. to look at it from that perspective, mm. uh, yes. But no, I don't think National is in for a, a hiding, and I've been saying this for a while. I think that the, um, uh, the Labour Party vote and the ACT Party vote are both soft because you're yeah. seeing this massive shift in people's voting intentions. Yes, yes. But when they come to the polling booth, if you've been a lifetime National Party voter... You're going you're gonna to vote blue, are you? Some, Regardless of anything. Some, some of those people who are indicating they're going to vote Labour and going to yep. vote ACT, uh, I think a surprisingly large percentage of them are going to come home to National on the day. So I think that... And you've, that's got to be expected, right? I mean, you're, you're talking about what they were, what, 35 last time and they're now pushing 50. To see a 15, 16, 17 percent swing in one electoral cycle, it would I have to. It would have big. to be an extraordinary universal experience, wouldn't it? Um, in your mind, indeed, Martin, indeed, in your mind. indeed. Uh, let's talk Greens. UMR 3.2 percent. Simon for environmentalists. There is no other bigger issue than climate change, and we see as we see a series of acceleration events occurring globally as we speak, from Californian forest fires to Siberian forest fires. So why are the Greens on the threshold of being kicked out? Well, look, in the words of Confucius, if you're Confucius, Martin, they're pretty shit. I mean, I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> I must. I, mi I missed that part of his, of not, his philosophy. Have you, not heard that, have you not heard that quote? Look, look it up. It's somewhere there. So I think right. there's at least Chinese lists that are going around with famous people's names on them, which I just said before I came on the school on one of them. But anyway, I, look, I just don't think they're focusing on stuff that matters. I think um, their leadership is poor. I think, you know, I, I, I'm picking it now. I, I NZ first, I've been saying it's toast for a while. I yes. reckon the Greens are toast as well. I think it's going to be a remarkable result where you've got three parties in Parliament, National Act and Labour. I think actually if there was going to be another party, um, you know, sad to say, and I, I, don't, I, I don't want to say this, but you, you could say this crazy conspiracy party has got as much chance as the Greens right at the moment. Wow, that is a huge well, no, call. That I is think, a huge call. I think the reason why the Greens are in trouble yep. is this, this, this COVID um, that pandemic and the economic reaction to it yes. is diluting people's concerns about climate change. Climate change is something you worry about when everything else is going well. It is an expense. Climate change, worrying about climate change is a, is a luxury. And when you're worried about paying the bills, you don't care quite so much about forest fires. Damien, with barely a month to go, do the Greens focus on rallying their own base with even more woke microaggression policing? Or do they try and woo more moderate voters? Is it time to be broad church or still pure temple? I think they've got to go after those Labour Party, 
those former Green voters that are slipping away to the Labour Party and they, they need to give them an economic reason to come home because the reason they're moving yeah. to Jacinda yep. is because they're concerned about their economic environment. Yep. That's what they're worried about. And so if the Greens want to pull that 2% back, I think that's where they need to go. The hardcore woke crazies yep. and the economic communists are already in their tank. Simon, if, if the Greens come under 5%, Will it be the alienating woke middle class identity politics that will be blamed, or will it be the white heteronormative cis male patriarchy's fault? You know, look, the, the real honest answer that probably no one will be real and honest enough to say is the reason the Greens will be under 5% it can be summed up in one word, and that's Jacinda. Um, to, to, to the point that Damien was making, look, if climate change was our biggest issue, and we were going to the election with the left taking that viewpoint, Jacinda would still be sucking up all of those votes. It's her yeah. nuclear free moment, and she'd be pushing it hard. She knows, of course, that that's not where things are at at the moment, and look, th those votes plain and simple are going over to uh, uh, the Labour Party because of Jacinda Ardern. Uh, New Zealand First UMR, 3.9%. Simon, how many times does Winston need to shout at Jack Tame to get New Zealand First <laughs> over 5%? Uh, look, a few more times, I think. I, I just think the phone's off the hook, I think. Uh, even those who were in his target market, um, they're sitting there and they say to themselves, you know what, I think I've said this to you guys before, but this is a party that's been right at the um, apex of power. Winston was able to get anything he wanted. Yeah. And, and look, he, he sort of, he did, but they weren't things that mattered to us. And yeah. he can't now say distance himself from the government because he's the top dog and been for a very long time the top dog in the government. But isn't, so isn't he doing a brilliant job? Isn't, isn't Winston doing a brilliant job at the moment as positioning himself as the opposition? He is attacking the government Despite the fact that he's Deputy Prime Minister, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's actually going on, on the attack on things like T.Y. Point and all yep. the rest of it. And I think politically, I think he's doing a really good job there. Not enough to save himself, I don't think. Da Winston, Damien but... Winston is complaining bitterly about the lack of campaigning crowds willing to turn up because people are worried about the pandemic. Winston is a politician who derives energy from those crowds and derives energy from the campaign process. Do you think the TV debates are his last chance? Well, I don't know that they're his last chance. I think in some ways it's perhaps his biggest risk because a stumble... Because oh, you think if he does a Jack Tame, he starts shouting? Yeah, I think, I think if he... Yeah. If, it could be like a negative worm. If, yeah. he, if he does something stupid or he says something or he loses his temper, and you saw with the Jack Tame thing... He right, he did. He, did. he actually lost his temper, didn't he? So if he loses his temper there and i think there is a part of winston you get the impression he knows this is his one song yeah and i think he's just going out swinging but i think he knows he's going out and so he might decide listen i don't get a valedictory speech i'm just going to throw some punches on the stage let's talk at umr had them at an incredible 6.2 percent simon because of no national slump actor gaining a lot of uncritical support uh this week act promised to dump all climate changing policy to date does policy extremism like this make it possible does it does, does it make it a, a, a national act 2023 government more or more unlikely more likely or more unlikely oh i, I think the reality of um actors and you know I'm, I'm no historian but we can sort of see how this goes uh let's say it does pretty well at this election it brings in a bunch of new mps i can remember when i was first a new mp there were a lot of act mps and then the reality is the support sucks off a bit um, as those MPs don't necessarily perform and people sort of don't think they've done so well. So I, I, don't, I don't see it personally for myself as a 6-7% party. Even if it does real well this time, I think it will come back from that in 2023. I, I think Damien's actually right. The support there for ACT at the moment, for the reasons you just said, uh, Martin, which is that you know they're sort of getting this uncritical support yep. um, from National and so on, that, that is... Soft. And so we just got to kind of see where they get to on the day. I won't be surprised if they do really well, but yep. if I had to pick it right now, I would go with sort of three percent, three and a half percent. Is, is, is not six? Is National going to um, uh, uh, try and take them out? Because you've, no. you've, you've got you've got MPs like Brett Hudson or whatever that really need National to be in the mid thirties to to get in. So is there pressure internally to say, listen, maybe we need to take these, you know, 1080 guys out? Oh, de definitely not, because, look, I think uh, the reality is our path to power um, re re relies on having one or two other parties and acts 
with David Seat at Epsom. That, that all works very well. Your point's well made, though, right? And, and that's why I, I think I've said to you guys before, actually, when we've been on, uh, on radio, on Magic Talk, um, that uh, people should be looking at these list MPs. And I don't think it takes you too long in yeah. to say, you know what, these aren't real high calibre. And when you're pitching them against, frankly, Paul Goldsmith and Michael Woodhouse uh, and, uh, and some other very good uh, list MPs on our side... I think the quality on our side shines through. Damien Act have got the gun fetishists, the anti-1080 um. activists, and the free market libertarians. Why do you need the climate <laughs> deniers as well? Haven't you got it all paid? Why, why, why do you need to go there? What's going on? We want it all, Martin. We want it all. And listen, we, we're looking really closely at these 5G guys as well. Oh, so Jesus we're thinking, we're thinking there's, another, okay. there's another 1% there. We're let's, gonna go let's, for it. let's get into it then. Billy TK and Jamie Lee Ross. Um, Simon, I put to you, uh, sir that these guys are actually quite dangerous to the body politic. Look, you and I might have policy disagreements. I might disagree with, with Damien here, I'll disagree with Green Party, disagree with ACT, or disagree with New Zealand First, but we all debate and have a discussion in a political landscape and a cultural landscape where 2 plus 2 equals 4. These yeah. guys, 2 plus 2 equals whatever the bloody hell they think it says. And, 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 and I think that I'm going on, I'm on safe ground here when I state quite emphatically that the virus is not a bioengineered weapon spread by 5G to bring about a shadowy one world government out of the UN. Wouldn't we need right now politicians like yourself, Simon, and or any of the other leaders who are going to be on the multi-party debate where they're going to actually be, uh, it looks like it's going to be Billy TK or Jamie Lee Ross, they haven't decided who will front yet, but isn't it a responsibility during that multi-party debate that all of the other candidates that you've got, you'll, you'll have Labour, you'll have you guys, you've got New Zealand First, you've got ACT, um, you've got the Greens. Isn't it actually important that after you make your pitch to the people, you then actually just all collectively turn around and gun for those guys? Because they're the bloody threat and danger, aren't they, to the democracy, to the democratic process that we all, that we all believe in in this country? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think you're right in as far as, you know, you, you and I, and actually all the parties in Parliament, we talk the same language. I, I might think the Greens are a bit crazy and fruity from time to time. I actually may, may think, you know, uh, uh, the libertarianism from Seymour sometimes goes a bit far and it's not my cup of tea. But fundamentally, the, 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 the spectrum isn't that massive. These guys are next level, right? Right. We, we, we all agree on all of that. The problem is, I read Shane to Poe's piece this morning, and it's a good piece, and he sort of put it, you know, put, put, put it well. Mm. I sit there and unfortunately say, if that party reaches the criteria that TVNZ said, and by the way, I, I find it a bit surprising that they have, frankly. Yep, when there's yep. other parties, you might say, well, that, that would be more or better candidates to be in the debate that, that aren't there than sure. the, the public party. If they do, though, unfortunately, I'm in that, is it Voltaire or whoever it was, uh, who said, you know, hate everything they say, but, you know, support their right to say it. Um, they're whack jobs, they're wrong, um, you're right about 5G, et cetera, et cetera, but, but look, unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, unfortunately, we're a democracy, and if, if that's the sort of position they, they want to put, well, that's that. That, 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 that point, that I, don't, I don't think anyone... No, no one disagrees with that, and I think with the, I think we, we all agree if they, if they reach the criteria, they deserve their spot at the table. What I'm saying is, do you think there's actually an obligation on... I mean, has National decided who they're putting up for that multi-party debate yet? Uh, I, I, well, I mean, in terms of the, the debates, with my understanding, the way they work is you'll have your, your, your big-time leaders, if you like, Judith and uh, Jacinda, and then you'll have those smaller ones. I, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I, I said to you before that there's a danger these guys get there. I, I, I'll put it to you like this. Yeah. That's on, not on the basis that they get 5%. But it's on the basis that um, Billy is more likely to win Titai Tokerau yep. um, uh, of Labour than Shane Jones is um, of National and Northern. That's true, that's so true. What does that all mean? It means simply this Labour cannot be complacent. They need to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at Titai Tokerau. They need to make sure Calvin Davis has the team around him to bring his A game, yep. uh, a game because they can't lose. They mustn't lose. But it, but it, but. Do we, do we run into the 
um, risk of potentially playing into their hands. I mean, you know, we've spent quite a bit of time talking about these yep. people. Yep. To some extent, taking them see, so, okay, so they qualify for the debate, fine, they can say whatever they say, but if the rest of the parties just kind of ignore them and treat them like the McGillicuddy serious party, which is, I think, how we should, oh, okay. then that's, then it's, it's not so much taking them seriously. It's like what David Seymour did the other day, and and he he, he called Billy TK an effing idiot. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's probably the right approach. Just right. just just laugh at them. Do you yes, think? Yes, do you, yes, yes, yes. You, yep. you are right because most likely scenario is they don't get there. Right. They don't right. Get seat, they don't. They absolutely getting nowhere near five percent. Um. So so you're 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 right in a sense. Um, that, that said, they are much more dangerous, unfortunately, than the McGillicuddy serious party. Right, right, right. I mean, if, if those guys did actually get anywhere near power, it would be a vindication of the crazy, crazy bullshit they've been spouting. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you just got to look in Germany where sometimes the neo-Nazis get over the line and the other parties have a gentleman's agreement just to ignore them. Right, so that's and and that's the way you think it should happen here. Yeah, I think because they're they they're not going to get the thirty three or thirty four percent that you know the, the the Nazis got back in the day. Sure. So, so look, if they win a seat, I I think the best approach is just to um um one laugh at them. Yep. And two, don't engage with them if they get over the line. Simon, what do you see coming up this week that's going to be a highlight? Uh, next question. Uh, the what 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 do you see that this week that's going to come up that's going to be a highlight? <laughs> Look, I, I, look, I, I, I hope um, that we start to get some really exciting policies um, and that they get the attention they deserve. As I say from Labour, I think we've had slogans. I think from National, we've had worthy stuff so far. Um, I, I, I want to see um, my, my great party, um, the Judith, um, get a bit bolder. Yes. Um, and I want to see Labour um, get away from the slogans and tell us what the next three years would really look like um, if they were government. Damien Grant, highlight. Um, I want to see National come up with a really kick-ass response to the um, pre-election budget financial information. Yes, which yes, is yes, out, yes, 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 that's going to be interesting, isn't it? So I think there's two things. Um, I think it's going to be ugly. Yes. Um, and if it is ugly, then that's the opportunity, I think, for National to get on the front foot and say, OK, here we have it. We now have a real problem. Right. And the question is not who can protect us from the virus, yes. because Jacinda and Labour have already won that argument. It is who is going to get this country back on its feet and who's going to stop this country falling onto its back. Yes. And that's the opportunity, I think, for Judas, National, Simon, Paul Goldsmith and the rest of them. Last, last, last charge. That's fantastic. Um, that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back next week, next Tuesday, for the Waterstone election special. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate.